Ryzen 3000 and Intel's 5 gigahertz all the time CPU, Peak Design's latest tripod, Kef LSX, SVS Prime Wireless, NFR S1000 dB, Powered Speaker Roundup, and more. All coming up on Tech Thing. <laughs> Thank you, patrons. Without your support via patreon.com slash tech thing, we wouldn't be able to make the show for you. We appreciate it. I'm Shannon Morris. And I'm Patrick Norton. And this is Tech Thing, where we have something useful in every single show. So last week, we had we had Computex Yay! speculation. Yeah, we did. This week, AMD Ryzen 7 3700X, Ryzen 7 3800X, and Ryzen 9 3900X arriving July 7. 7? Yes. 7, seven for seven, the seven, 7 nanometer <laughs> Zen 2 core architecture. Double the cache, double the floating point performance. The world's first 7 nanometer desktop processor, which I expect you'll hear Dr. Sue mention two, three thousand times <laughs> uh, on 7, 7, 7 nanometer day. It's also going to support PCI Express 4.0. There will be a new 570 chipset to go with it, though the Ryzen 3rd gen promises to work with X470 and B450 motherboards out of the box and some older or, or earlier or lesser uh, AMD Ryzen chipsets with BIOS updates. I love the idea of the same socket motherboard compatibility for three generations of trips. Trips, chips. chips. Well, two and a half really well, generations. But me too, because that means you don't have to worry so much about upgrading every <laughs> single time. Oh my goodness. Although, if you want PCI Express 4.0, you're going to be buying the new motherboard. Uh, I'm really looking forward to NVMe performance on PCI Express 4 on Intel or AMD. Yes. It it just promises all the right speed. <laughs> Or and read speed. Also, for the gamers out there, I did read that Ryzen has not necessarily like said no to ray tracing, so that might be a possibility for the newest ones. We shall see. Ryzen 9 will offer 12 core, 24 threads on the 3900X for $499. Yay! For comparison, Intel's 8 core, 16 thread i9 9900K is $488. Mm. I cannot wait to see the benchmarks to see what the real world performance looks like. FYI, entry level Ryzen 5 3600, 6 cores, 12 threads, $199. Base clock is 3.6 gigahertz, max boost 4.2. Wow. If it is as overclockable as some of the Ryzen's we've seen in the past, this could be epic. Yes. And again, I really, really, really want to see the benchmarks. So that's quite a different approach than Intel's 8-core i9-9900KS, which promises to run all the cores at 5 gigahertz. All the time! All the time! So basically a bin-sorted i9-9900K that can consistently run at 5 gigahertz, and that will ship in Q4 of this year. I like the idea of gigahorses. 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 And we expect it to cost a lot more than 500 bucks too, so probably be a little bit out of my price budget. I would be delighted to see it ship for, you know, $600. Uh, yeah. I think that's a big fantasy. So Intel also announced 10th gen Ice Lake CPUs and quote, those are going to be redefining what's possible in a thin and light laptop. Project I'm, Athena. I'm very excited about that. Yeah. 10 nanometer and it's a big jump in graphics performance, we are told, along with an 18% jump in IPC instructions per cycle over Skylake, along with integration of Thunderbolt 3, which mm -hmm. is great, and Wi-Fi 6 too, and benchmarks for for performance and battery life. We have got to see those. Please make them happen soon, everyone. <laughs> that would be nice. Yes. AMD also announced the Radeon RX 5700, the first Navi GPU, which will also come in July. Very little performance info was dropped beyond showing a Radeon RX 5000 that was, uh, you know, demoed versus an NVIDIA RTX 2070 playing Strange Brigade Live. Support for PCI Express 4.0 is going to be in the 5000 series. It'll be 7 nanometer shock. And most of the details are expected at AMD's next Horizon event June 10th, the day before E3 opens. So I think that we can expect a lot more news coming from Computex. Yeah. I know that we're going to see some awesome announcements. So we're going to keep up to date on everything that's coming. So make sure to track us on Twitter. Yeah. We will definitely be retweeting the like favorites of the news. Pretty much everybody is announcing something. And almost everybody that's announcing something is announcing lots of things. <laughs> so many things. So many things. I have spent about a week and a half testing and using the brand new da -da -da, Peak Design Travel Tripod, which Patrick is <laughs> lovingly taking out of the very tight prototype case. The case is a little thin. <laughs> Everything else, quite interesting. Quite interesting. So I wanted to share what I love and what I think that they should probably fine tune before the final product ships, because this just hit Kickstarter and has surpassed their goal in under a few hours just last week. And it will release at the end of 2019 to backers. So you will see this start to ship in around the December, just before the holidays is what they're saying. So I go to see 
CES every single year with Patrick and I manage all the videography. So I carry all of my video gear in a backpack. It's heavy, it's bulky, and honestly, it made me sick one year because I was so exhausted from carrying it around constantly, like several miles, and that's one very good reason why I never joined the military. <laughs> so <laughs> finding something that will save me a bit of weight and will make my bag less bulky is going to be a huge win in my notebook. So the travel tripod is spatial efficient, that's what they say, and it's the size of a water bottle looking straight down at 3.25 inches diameter and 60 inches fully deployed from top to bottom. Bottom. So it is a full-scale travel tripod. So instead of twist locks, it uses these cam levers for each of the different leg pieces. And I gotta say, I, I like them. So when I'm setting up for interviews or something like that, um, I notice that the feet don't adjust at all down at the bottom, but the cam levers make it incredibly fast to use and to actually set up. So if I'm doing interviews, for example, it'll be a lot easier for me to get ready. We both use a, a similarly sized tripod currently, yeah, which do. has round legs yeah. with twisty locks. and. Uh, you know, levers can be nice and simple when you're yes. in a rush. <laughs> yes, they are very nice and simple. Um, I will mention that with the feet, even though they don't adjust, once you have everything dispersed to the correct positioning, they do sit flat on the ground, so you don't really need to worry about them adjusting. Uh, I do think I might purchase those really cool spikes that they have on the Kickstarter, though, in case I want to like take this into unruly territory at some Ice point. Ice photography. Ice photography. <laughs> <laughs> the legs do have little buttons that you can push down to angle them to a low ground level for, or for that normal tripod level. And those are found right at the very top, very close to the head of the tripod, right there. I have a funny feeling this is being manufactured in a place that makes tripods for a lot of manufacturers it might on be. Amazon. Yeah. Because there's a lot of these design elements are very similar. Yeah, yeah. But then you can sort of angle it down and get your sort of... It's, yeah. It's slick. Is that a ball it head? It is slick. It is a ball head. Uh, the ball head has a single adjustment ring, and this allows for 360 degrees of adjustments, including three quick options for panorama shots. So that's really easy to get to. You just slide it to the side, and then you got that 360 degrees of awesomeness. Uh, the plate at the top is also quick release, so you just press it to pop it out. It's not proprietary either. You can use it with Arca Swiss tripod plates and Peak Design's other equipment too. So oh, that's if you awesome. Have yeah, if you have one of their previous ball heads or uh, the the mounts at the top, you don't have to you know switch it out or anything. It'll yeah. work with that. Well, I mean, Yay. people get into Peak Design. And there's a whole Peak Design. You know, there's the belt holster. There's the yeah, thing exactly. and the thing. And so the... if like you're using the camera clip or something, right. and you have one of their little mounts on there, you can just switch it and stick it on there, just like cool. in a couple of seconds. Yeah, it's really easy. Um, I tested it myself because I have one of those at home. So the head is also 3.25 inches in diameter too. So it's not any bigger than the legs when they are all folded together. Which is can, nice. Yeah, you can legit like stick this entire thing in your backpack's water bottle compartment, which is great. Unfortunately though, it does have some drawbacks. There's no fluid head for photographers, but you can add a universal mount on the top and they are selling a universal mount on the Kickstarter. Folks do recommend a very, very cheap camera panning base with Arca Swiss style plates for 20 bucks on Amazon. So you can just replace this one by unscrewing the little, little tabbies right here with a hex key that is included and you stick on the universal mount and then you have that nice panorama plate so you can get those nice shots with video video uh, so that link will be below for you if you want to get that over on Amazon uh, the little locking ring adds security for your plate as well and that's over on the side right here so you can slide it back and forward so that you don't accidentally slip that and make your camera fall off some other features, you can use your camera in inverted mode, upside down, along with low ground level mode like you saw. There's a bubble level on the top, but I saw that this was covered up by my lens when you mount your camera on it. So right. I feel like maybe just check your check your uh, stabilization and your level before you stick your camera on there. It's we've, I mean, it's funny because we've, we've seen a bunch of cameras with so cool. many of these features, not, I think, in this small of a yeah. package. Yeah, yeah. But um, it works. Uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm waiting for the price because I'm yeah. a little afraid. Uh, yeah, yeah, you should be. <laughs> uh, there is a hook for stabilization or counterweights, like you can see up at the top now that he switched it around into <laughs> inverted mode, uh, plus a universal phone mount that Ooh. works for little and big phones. And I tested that with my 3XL along with the 3A. So you just take off the hook and then this pops out and it's magnetically stuck in there. So you will never lose the thing as long as you stick it back in the little hole. Oh. 
Is it that great? I am. I. This is very MacGyver. I was like, <laughs> yes, that's so awesome. Uh, also, as we mentioned, that soft case is a little bit too tight, but that one was the prototype, so it will be a little bit larger upon production. At least that's what they told us at a PR meeting. And, I mean, Peak Designs is is they live and die by their design and they their really utility. Do. So yeah. I don't imagine they'll ship the impossible to install case. And they listen. They actually listen to their people, the people that buy their things. So the best part is there are two options. There's the aluminum one, which I have here. That's 3.44 pounds. <laughs> it's not that heavy. <laughs> uh, this one is gonna cost $349.95, but it's $289 during the Kickstarter. So you do save a little bit over 50 bucks for it uh, if you back them. Carbon fiber, they also have that one available too. That one is really lightweight. It's 2.81 pounds. Super, super lightweight. <laughs> like, I, I bought one. I backed one on Kickstarter right. because I want the carbon fiber one. That one's going to be $599.95. But <laughs> their Kickstarter price is comparable to other really nice high-end carbon fiber tripods. That one's $479 on Kickstarter. So you save over 100 bucks for it. And this is kind of a classic situation where there's an aluminum one that's not that heavy. Yeah. A carbon fiber one that's maybe a quarter lighter but vastly more expensive. So yes, that's exactly. Carbon, carbon fiber is definitely expensive. And unlike some other manufacturers who do like five to 10 year warranties, mm -hmm. these are lifetime guaranteed. Nice. So they will fix it if you have any issues with it. So I did end up, like I said, purchasing the carbon fiber one on the Kickstarter because I wanted that one <laughs> because less weight and more compact is perfect for me, especially since I've traveled so much and I do so many convention on this, you know, gorilla style on the floor type of interviews and stuff like that. It's very important to me. So with that said, the compactness of the aluminum one is amazing. It's beautiful. So this will be used a lot in my studio, especially since I need to move it around a lot for my shows back and forth between the different sets. So I am going to put a link to the Kickstarter below so you can check it out yourself since it is running for a good two months. So you have plenty of time to save up for one if you're interested in it and you have plenty of time to back it because yeah. they don't have any kind of early adopter thing on the Kickstarter. It's just two this months. Those price. are your two <laughs> options. That's the price you get. So I it's liked it. Thing. I'm very, very happy with it. I'm very pleased with it. And I'm glad that it's universal so I can stick that panorama mount on here. That's the big thing for me. So I'm very glad it's universal. The panorama mount is really slick. Yes. So let me know what you think. And if you have any questions about it below, I'll be happy to answer those for you. I mean, this thing's durable, so I could like hit it with a hammer and see what happens if you want me to. Um, yeah, just comment below or find me on Twitter. I'm at snubs and I'll be happy to answer those questions for you. I'll go get the sledge. <laughs> So powered monitors, speakers with an amp built in. They've been a staple in audio and video workstations forever. You remember the ones back at Revision 3 where oh, the yeah. big tables and multiple Huge. levels. Yeah, the speakers way out in the left and right. They were very fancy. Very fancy. Think fancy computer speakers and generally much bigger and shaped like speakers. So a couple years ago, Keth launched the LS50 Wireless, an amplified streaming version of their outstanding LS50. And audio geeks started to seriously wonder if these sound so good, why do I have thousands invested in separates? Uh, or at least in one case, a buddy of mine who's super audiophile buddy, who's his, his casual system, which he had 50 grand tied up in. Uh, he, he, he said, I don't really know where the extra 48 grand needs to come from. Because wow. he was listening to these like, you know, $2,200 speakers. Yeah. And they sounded just as good as this incredibly expensive system he'd put together. It also made something about some, uh, some audiophile gear, maybe M4 not worth price. But that's a rage fest in the post down below later on. <laughs> um, so one thought before I talk about all of these speakers, music sounds great even down low where the kick drums and the tubas live. All of them will deliver a much more awesome musical, movie, or especially gaming experience or movies with explosions if you add a subwoofer to them. Two of them make that easy to add. Um, and it's also incredible to realize just how much better so many things sound when you add a subwoofer in. I can I can agree yeah. wholeheartedly. Bass head in the house, yo. So the LS50 wireless, they cost like $2,000, $2,200, depending on when you were buying them. Kef's smaller, more desktop-friendly LSX wireless music system costs around half that, $1,100, but they deliver spectacular audio from the UniQ driver, um, or unique, depending on who's saying it and when they're saying <laughs> it. Uh, that's a three-quarter inch aluminum dome, concentrically mounted in the center of a four and a half inch magnesium aluminum cone, very, very similar to the LS50 and also the egg speakers we looked at several years ago. Uh, they will get louder than is healthy for your ears, well over 100 dB. 
and you can connect uh, via an optical or 3.5 millimeter stereo jack, or you can stream to them over Spotify, uh, stream to them over Wi-Fi with Spotify Connect or Kef's app. Mm. They also support Bluetooth 4.2 and Aptex. Frankly, I've never heard a UniQ driver that wasn't spectacular. Um, imaging, sound staging, symbols. Um, these are going to pry whatever you need out of the audio you feed them. Uh, they are very, very good. Again, from those like $250 to $400 eggs, yeah. all the way up to the LS50, all the way up to the $25,000 blade speakers, these drivers are really well done. Um, there could be more bass. <laughs> <laughs> and they give you a subwoofer output to help with that. Uh, you might want to elevate the, the front of these to point the tweeter more towards your ears. Uh, and again, really, a subwoofer is a huge improvement. It makes them just about perfect. Uh, they're down 3 dB around 54 hertz, so low end is not their forte. Okay. And if you want to feel the thump from the BFG or the car crash, you will definitely want a subwoofer. Mm -hmm. Frankly, you might not care until you hear them with a subwoofer, but then you will always want the subwoofer back. You're gonna need a power outlet for each of these speakers because they are completely wirelessly separate. Nice. Um, so I kind of like that though. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. There's also an optional RJ45 connector should you want hardware. Uh, to you, if you if for if for whatever reason you want to connect the left to the right with yeah. an Ethernet cable, you basically can. They come in gloss white or uh, fabulous hipster fabric coverings in olive, maroon, blue, or black. Uh, they blend well with most decor. It's kind of like the fabric that is on Google's everything. Yeah, you also see but, those on the Amazon Echo devices too. Yeah, big thumbs up. Well, I guess this is a pointer finger and this is a thumb. And then $1,100, not cheap. <laughs> so let's talk about SVS. Uh, next up, SVS's Prime Wireless Speaker System. They're about an inch taller than the caps at 10 by 6 by 7 inches. Uh, SVS's Prime Wireless Speaker System, they cost a lot less, 600 bucks. They use a cable to connect the two speakers, which is probably where some of the, the savings comes from. Uh, streaming audio is handled by Bluetooth, Aptex, DST PlayFi, or Spotify. Uh, DST PlayFi or Spotify, obviously, for over Wi-Fi, or Spotify Connect, I should say. I love Spotify Connect. I've never used it. it it sounds I, really cool though, I believe you. <laughs> everything shows up and you can stream to it from Spotify. It makes me happy. Uh, like the DTS stuff, the Sono stuff, I'll yeah. stop now. You can connect directly to the speakers via a stereo RCA 3.5 millimeter jack or an optical input. Uh, there's a volume knob and an input knob on the front that makes them really desktop friendly. The built-in DAC supports up to 192 kilohertz 24-bit audio, which is high def, just like the KEFs. Cool. I don't really care about high def audio, but if you do, now you know. Uh, again, we have like a one-inch tweeter, a 4.5-inch mid woofer uh, and then there's like a pair of amps and that's what's kind of crazy about these is there's like a, a, a four 50 watt amps one for each tweeter one for each woofer wow um, like 50 Hertz to 25 kilohertz plus or minus 3 DB uh, I would like more bass because right now I'm in love with subwoofers and I'm gonna stop saying that over and over again imaging was excellent highs were clean and detailed SVS is primarily known as a subwoofer company they are mm -hmm. an online subwoofer company like shoe that does direct to end users uh, but they make a solid speaker and you can buy the Prime Wireless bundled with a subwoofer for about the price of the KEFs or without the subwoofer, a little over half the price of the KEFs. And uh, if you like piano gloss or piano white, they look fabulous. Just don't touch them because so fingerprint bougie. magnet. And, well, yeah, I mean, literally, it's like it's like glossy black piano. Yeah. And if there's any dust in your house, you'll be like, oh, you have to wipe those off immediately. <laughs> uh, but they look good, right? The finish is really, really nice. The sounds are really, really good. And they have lots and lots of streaming options. Let us go to the bargain of this roundup. Uh, the Edifier S1000DB at 350, or I should say the Edifier S1000DB Hi-Fi 2.0 Active Bookshelf Speakers. Ooh. It's a long name on Amazon. Uh, at 350 bucks, they're the least expensive in this group. Uh, and at 13.5 inches high by eight inches wide and 11.5 inches deep, by far the largest. These are probably more bookshelf than desktop, yeah. but depending on the size of your... As somebody who ran bookshelf speakers and a big amplifier on their desk for years, it doesn't bother me. And hey, they have built-in amps, so you don't need an amp on your desk. Uh, and they also have a cable to connect left and right. It is 16 feet long. Wow. It is massive. <laughs> it's a five-pin cable. It's like semi-proprietary. Um, it should work for most rooms if you, want, if you need speakers for the living room or for the dining room. Uh, the S1000s don't offer streaming options other than Bluetooth 4.0 Aptex, but you can connect to them uh, from your computer or a Raspberry Pi or a dedicated DAC, uh, optical coax, uh, analog RCA jacks. The 5.5 inch drivers and the big cabinets help deliver some pretty good thump down at the low end, which is good because it justifies the bigger cabinets. Mm -hmm. They're like the SVS, they're down a bit by 50 hertz and they start dropping off below that, but mm. the cabinet size, and these are all ported designs, so they're all kind of tuned to a particular frequency. Um, 
solid actually really really solid okay. again a subwoofer would be an improvement for the really really low stuff because i love that open note on the tuba uh, but these don't offer a subwoofer out to make that easy they're also 350 dollars. they are a shockingly good bargain they deliver excellent audio for the money uh, as good as the calves no uh you know there's there's they're also way less expensive <laughs> they're like a third the price yeah <laughs> yeah uh volume along with treble and bass controller on the back you can add wi-fi streaming via an external device which is what i did i used a chromecast audio cool. again though part of the low cost is concentrating on the basics drivers cabinets which folks love or hate it's a very distinctive design mm -hmm. uh, amps again 25 watts for each uh, 25 watts for each tweeter 35 watts for each woofer and before you're like i need 100 watts you don't you really, really don't, unless you want to melt your ears. Um, <laughs> these are a bargain, and they're going to delight folks that aren't getting seriously nerdly about their audio. And if you don't mind DIY streaming, or if you don't want streaming over Wi-Fi, these are a really, really solid choice. I got to say, you know, the 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 a lot of the detail at the high end, the difference between this and the calf is kind of subtle, mm -hmm. subtle, 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 subtle. What she said. <laughs> um, you know, there's there's advantages when the calf has a concentric design. There's things it does to help with imaging and yeah. the sound staging. Um, that said, if you mostly listen to music when things are going you know, on in the background, or if you're mostly gaming, or you're mostly watching movies, or if music is something where it's like, I'm streaming Pandora, mm -hmm. not to slag on Pandora, but you know, if, you, if you're not running with like, okay, I'm gonna do the lossless title, or I'm gonna do the high resolution, or the highest version of, of the Spotify, or should say Spotify Premium, you don't need to spend a whole lot of money on your speakers because you won't have the quality audio to feed it. Uh, in my opinion, Kef's got the best audio of the three. Edifier is the biggest bargain if you can jump uh, from the Edifier to the SVS Prime Wireless. The subwoofer out and streaming over Wi-Fi is fantastic, either from their app, which allows you to use services other than Spotify or directly out of Spotify. If you like streaming from Spotify, the SVS Prime Wireless is sweet. And of course, you can bundle it with a subwoofer for about twice the price. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm really digging powered speakers. If there's a guitar center near you, you can check out models for professionals from JBL, Mackie, and many, 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 many more that are technically aimed towards pros or consumers or prosumers that love to play with audio and video and want powered monitors so they feel like they are a super professional. Some <laughs> of those actually sound amazing and I will dig in that uh, area sometime in the future. There are too many. There are too way many too models. many. Like if you have the money, go buy Genelex. They're amazing. But they, they make the kefs look inexpensive. I would um. <laughs> love to know what you think of some of the, the gaming desktop speakers that are on the market, because I always see those, <laughs> but I don't know if they're actually any good. I think in in, in my limited experience with gaming speakers, I've, I've heard a lot of gaming headsets. Yeah. A lot of gaming headsets, they spend a lot of money on design yep. and the least amount of money possible on drivers. And what's crazy, right? Sonos, you know, there's only like $5.40 in the actual speaker in really? a Sonos wow. one. I could have that number wrong. I can, I can double check. Uh, Sonos won't answer that question, but somebody else will. But, <laughs> um, you know, it's amazing how amazing something can sound and how cheap that driver can be if you're buying thousands of them. Mm -hmm. A lot of the gaming stuff, it's like a lot of gaming keyboards. It's like, you know, our special proprietary semi-custom. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're like, eh. Yeah. It's certainly flashy. <laughs> My 17 inches of key travel. I'm exaggerating, but I would like to hear more of them. But yeah. so many of them are like style first audio much, much later. <laughs> mm. We'll be back. <laughs> Tech Thing was created by Patrick and I way back in December of 2014, which honestly was a big turning point in my career. Techzilla was over, I was leaving Twit, and Patreon had just become a thing. So knowing that we could potentially create our own independent show that could be crowdfunded by our biggest fans and allow us to continue making epic content for you all meant the absolute world to me, and it still does. You need lots of passion and motivation and integrity to work in this field without burning out. And I hope that our love of tech comes across on the other side of the camera in each and every episode. We've done over 200 episodes of Tech Thing together in the Hack 5 studio for four and a half years, including both of those studios, honestly, and just a few here in Patrick's home studio, which is really awesome. And as with every show, they're always changing with the times. And I knew this year would be a year of major change. I mean, my tarot cards last year, yes, I read tarot cards, they totally called it. This is my last episode of Tech Thing.
but it's not my last tech show. In fact, I've started doing tech reviews and highlighting awesome gear over on my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash Shannon Morse, where I will be consistently posting two plus videos per week about travel and technology with, of course, an emphasis on security and privacy, as I always do, because I'm a nerd about that stuff. I even opened up my own Patreon. It's under the same name. It's patreon.com slash Shannon Morse, which is where you can ask me tech questions. You can get secret travel tips. Only locals know, especially here in the Bay Area. San Francisco is a tourist location and you can get access to high-res travel photography by yours truly and i've also got some other snazzy perks in store too which i haven't necessarily shared yet so to celebrate this really big change in my life i'm actually hosting a giveaway on my youtube channel so you can subscribe and comment on my smartphone camera shootout video which is posting this week for a chance to win this brand new pixel 3a and of course if you follow me on twitter and instagram and on Patreon, those will be counted as extra entries. So if you want this little baby, you can get it by entering my giveaway. Instagram.com slash snubs and Twitter.com slash snubs. So my passion since I was nine years old, building computers with my dad has always been technology and it always is going to be. Whether I'm sharing that love through a network or through a co-hosted show with somebody like Patrick, or my personally branded channel. I'm never but a YouTube video away. So I wanna say thank you to all of our incredible viewers, our Patreon supporters especially, and our biggest advocates for making this show so, so successful. So here's to you and here's to a new chapter in my own life. And I hope you will consider supporting my new content. I'm really, really excited about it. So keep on doing something analog for yourselves. Be a positive force in your life and the lives of people around you and always, always follow what you believe in. I love you all so much. Thank you. Actually, this is probably the last episode of Tech Thing for both of us. I've been on multiple weekly or daily production deadlines literally for over 20 years since I moved out to California to help launch ZDTV, which some of you know as Tech TV. I'm rethinking how and what I do and how it might impact my family a lot less. So to the viewers that have been rolling along with me from Tech TV to DLTV to Techzilla and Tech Thing, I am grateful and I am humbled and I really Really love doing this for you. I also need to thank Tom Merritt, Anthony Carboni, and Brian Brushwood, and Brian Brushwood especially, who took a real long phone call from me about 20 minutes after Discovery laid me off back in 2014 and walked me through the best way to move forward with Patreon, which made me think running a house out of my house, a house out of my house, a show out of my house, might actually be possible. And of course, Darren Kitchen's generosity with Hack5 Studio, which meant I didn't have to buy a ton of equipment to make Tank Thing happen. Shannon and I have had quite an adventure. And I gotta thank uh, all of our patrons who stepped forward to make that possible. It has been a privilege. Keep an eye on at Patrick Norton on at Twitter and on patricknorton.com to find out what comes next for me. Hopefully you'll enjoy the adventure and we'll see what comes next. So from both of us and the jingling husky behind us, thank you so much for supporting Tech Thing. You have been amazing with your questions and your suggestions and your knowledge and of course the support of all our patrons who made it possible for us to do this. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, we love you all so, so very much. Oh my goodness. What's the YouTube channel? YouTube.com slash Shannon Morse. It's just like my name. And you can have the chance to win a beautiful Pixel 3a in lovely. This is a lavender one, right? Yes. It's barely Purple-ish. Purple-ish. <laughs> <laughs> that's just not even, that's not even like a 1970s appliance color. It's Barbie a thing. White. It's a thing. Purple-ish. <laughs> oh my goodness. So we are going to continue, well I'm going to continue doing all the YouTube fun stuff over on that channel. I'm so going to go check it out. building PatrickNorton.com. Yeah, do it. You know, I'm very excited for life after Squarespace. Oh, I'm sure you are. <laughs> Let me tell the you. Behind the scenes Squarespace talks. <laughs> It's a thing. <laughs> Site maps. Boy, if you like Google knowing you exist, mm -hmm. use a platform that lets you manipulate the site map. <laughs> hey, tweet at Pattern Norton if you want to know what the lead but I'm talking about. Because I'll keep answering questions and you're still at. At Snubs, S N U B S. I'm always there if you want to know all the security and privacy stuff. Thank you guys so much. Bye.